DK. Let's talk some NBA Finals, Celtics Warriors tonight, and I'm joined by FS1 NBA analyst Rick Buecher on the Nick Cattle Show, Sports 1140 KHDK. Rick, thank you for the time. It is much appreciated. Let's jump right in. Uh, how surprised are people in the game about the Celtics' complete turnaround this year? Oh, I think there's uh, if, if taking a, a big step back. Sure, there's surprise that they are where they are. I mean, you have a first-year coach in Ime Adoka. You had questions about whether the combination of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum could work. And then you have Marcus Smart calling them out in the midst of the season. And you're expecting that that's going to cause a toxic spill rather than bringing the team together. So the fact that it's gone the direction it has, no doubt that uh, this is not what people expected. But with every team that ends up, I mean, you could go through the Warriors history and Certainly, they had their points where they could have turned left and they turned right instead, and it made all the difference in where they are now. Yeah, let's talk about the Warriors. Are you at all surprised that they are in another finals after everything they've been through the past couple of years, Rick? Yeah, yeah. Well, and <laughs> just not everything they've been through, but the history of the NBA, teams don't go to five consecutive finals and then fall off dramatically and have all the injuries that I think are a natural byproduct of all those long seasons and grinding and playing all those hard minutes with the same core, and then somehow take two years off, reinvent themselves, and come back and are back in the finals. I don't know that there's any precedent for for this. And so... Yes. No, it's a huge surprise. It's a testament to, uh, obviously, the Warriors finding a way to navigate adding young pieces that fit, uh, getting lucky, and then just the perseverance of Steph Curry coming back from his injuries, Klay Thompson coming back from his, Draymond Green coming back from his. I mean, keep in mind, these are all guys that had rings. They were made men. They, they're they're – um, as, as Steph Curry said the other day, uh, he doesn't have any more to prove. He just has more to accomplish. Well, once you've proved everything, it's human nature to say, I'm good. Like, right. Do I really want to work as hard as I have to to get all the way back physically to where I was and maybe not be all the way back because I'm years older? So it really is a testament to just the drive and the, the the pursuit of greatness that those guys have, it is the exception rather the, than the rule when it comes to, to uh, human nature, to be honest. FS1's Rick Buecher is with us here on the Nick Cattle Show. Uh, Rick, when you look at the finals, does the path and who's had the hardest make any difference to you, or you just look at this as an individual series? Uh, I don't know if it's, if, if it's the path it, more so than what I've seen or what the path has revealed. Uh, I, I, I was coming into the, to the playoffs. I thought that the Milwaukee Bucks were going to repeat as champions. Hmm. And, uh, and whether it was the Warriors, the Phoenix Suns that they saw in the finals, I thought they were going to win. When the Boston Celtics were able to knock them off, even with Chris Middleton out, the way they knocked them off, the way Jason Tatum played, uh, the, the Celtics became my new favorite to win it all. And then I saw them against the Miami Heat. And this was their fourth time in the conference finals. If you if you look at the bubble as being a little bit different, uh, unique, you could make the case that this is the first time that the Miami Heat were actually in the conference finals with this core under these conditions. So the Celtics should have had a huge advantage experience wise. And yet it didn't look that way. They got beat in game one, didn't look prepared. They lost twice on their home floor. Even in game seven, they gave up 10 unanswered points to a team that was offensively basically Jimmy Butler and Max Struess. Right. So they didn't do anything that impressed me in the way that they played against Miami Heat, a lesser opponent than the Golden State Warriors. And that's what makes me feel like the Warriors are uh, should be the favorite to win this series, uh, both on the experience at this level and basically what I saw from the Boston Celtics. I said it um, 
and uh, it, it's it's out on social media. I, I I thought that the Celtics demonstrated against the Heat that they were not ready for this bright hot spotlight, and it only goes up. It's only amplified uh, in the NBA Finals. Interesting. So when you look at the Milwaukee series, the fact that the Celtics went to Milwaukee Game Six and beat them, and then beat mm-hmm. them Game Seven. The mm-hmm. Miami series just kind of trumps that to you because it's the Eastern Conference Finals and it was the most recent thing that happened to that team. Yeah, and 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 Miami did not have the offensive weapons that um, that certainly the, the, the Golden State has. Right. So I just you look every series is different, and I, I give them credit for knocking off the Bucks, but. They should have used that to, to if, if they had replicated what they did against Milwaukee, against Miami, that series does not go seven games. So whether it was overconfidence or whatever it may be, like that's not a habit that you want to have. And by the way, it's kind of a reflection of how their season uh, went. Like they struggled early on. And you would think at this point, they're in this place where they go, you know what? We we can't we can't kind of sit back. We can't downshift. And yet we saw them do that after sweeping the Brooklyn Nets. They come in against the Milwaukee Bucks. And what do they do? They didn't look prepared for that series either. So now they go into the NBA Finals. They've lost game 1 of the previous two series and they're going to play the Golden State Warriors, who are far more experienced in this atmosphere. They're going to play them on their home floor. And I'm expecting that I'm going to see the best of the Boston Celtics right out of the gate. It's hard for me to imagine. And the winner of game one in the NBA Finals wins the series 70% of the time. So there is no space for the Boston Celtics to kind of, as some people like to say, to play with their food. If they play great, and then say, okay, we're in a we're in a comfortable spot. No, they need to be all out every game against the Golden State Warriors to even have a chance. And they certainly did not demonstrate that against the Miami Heat. Rick Buecher with us here on the Nick Cattle Show, Sports Living Forty KHDK. By the way, Rick, I, I mean I agree when I look at this series. The one thing that I just keep going back to is execution on the Celtics' part in these lulls, and that's really what it is. I mean, you you go back to that Miami series. It wasn't game one. It was the third quarter. They got outscored by 25. It it wasn't game three in Boston. It was the first quarter. They got trounced. And if you have that kind of a lull in a finals game against a better team, you're done for. But I will ask you this. Does Mm -hmm. it tell you anything about the Celtics that they responded, that, yes, they had those moments, but still they haven't lost after a loss. They haven't lost two games in a row since March. What yep. does that tell you about this team? Well, certainly it's a gut, that, that, that they are a gutty team and that they deserve to be here without question. I'm not saying that they tricked their way into being in the final. Right. I'm just saying that the bar is set higher than what they've done to get here. And against the Warriors, you just can't afford that because you're looking at a firepower and a confidence that they have that – uh, that you just can't play with, you know, uh, um, half stepping and, and having an off quarter against the Miami heat is creates one thing you do that against you. You have a, an off four minutes against the golden state warriors and it's going to be a 25 point difference. Yep. So that to me is ultimately the distinction. All right. Last one for you, Rick, because obviously we gather that you've got the warriors winning this series. What could go wrong for them? How could they lose this series? Well, look, Marcus Smart has a history of um, of doing a great job against Steph Curry. Now it's the regular season, and uh, and so, but but Steph has shot twenty nine percent over all the games that the two have played against each other. If Steph Curry is going to shoot twenty nine percent, is going to put the numbers that he's put up against Marcus during the regular season, and they now have to turn to someone else. Jordan Poole filled that ably against Denver. He hasn't demonstrated that same efficiency. Granted, it's coming off the bench. The numbers are going to be a little bit different. But defensively, he has been horrific. And again, on this stage, the Boston Celtics will find a way to exploit the hell out of Jordan Poole 
at uh, at the defensive end so that almost no matter what he's doing offensively isn't going to be enough. The one other factor is, obviously, health. Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Steph. I mean, all of these guys are at that point where you question, okay, this is another grinding series. Who is going to be the healthier team? If Rob Williams can stay on the floor for the for, for the Celtics, if Marcus Smart is okay, versus the Warriors vets who have been here. And look, as, as good as Jordan has been, Andrew Wiggins, you still need that uh, confidence, soothing, calming presence of the execution of Steph and Draymond and Clay in order for this, this team to win a championship. I said it at the beginning. Like, I thought they had to have Andre Iguodala there as well for them to win. They've proved that they can do it without him, but they certainly can't. I, 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 it changes the equation. If the Celtics are healthy and the Warriors lose for whatever reason, one of their big three or one of their big three is compromised, that could be enough to tilt the scales. Rick, appreciate the time. Hopefully we have an excellent series ahead of us, and uh, talk to you soon. I appreciate you. You got it.